This is a first video for the Geometry F section of the textbook. In this video we're looking at volume. Now the volume of a solid is the quantity of space that the three-dimensional figure occupies. Volume is measured in cubic units, so cubic millimetres, cubic centimetres, cubic metres and cubic kilometres. And these conversions are provided in your textbook and were also covered in Transition Mathematics 1. Capacity is the amount of substance that can be contained in a 3D figure. Capacity is measured in millilitres, litres and kilolitres. Now note, although litres is conventionally denoted by a lowercase l, we use a capital L so we don't confuse it with the number of 1. These conversions are provided in our textbook and are also covered in Transition Mathematics 1. Prisms are a 3D figure that contain a constant cross-sectional area. So when you cut the shape in one direction you'll get the same shape every single time. So when you cut the solid I mean every time you'll get the same area. Now the volume of a prism is the product of the area of the base A and the height of the prism H. Now height is defined as the length perpendicular to the base of the prism. Now remembering that perpendicular means at right angles. So the volume of a prism can be given by AH. Volume formulas for prisms are provided in the textbook under the Geometry F section, so please have a look at these. Volumes of compound figures can be determined by adding and subtracting parts of the solid. So looking at some examples, find the volume of the following figures. So here you can see that this is a prism, and its reason it's a prism is if I cut this solid along this line every single time I'd get this shape here. Okay, so the cross-sectional area is given by that irregular polygon. So my volume is A times H. Now this length here would be at right angles to the base, so that's 7 times 3, which is 21 metres cubed. Okay, next we have a rectangular prism and we could look at it as being as this being the cross-sectional area. You could also look at this shape as that being the cross-sectional area or even the top. It doesn't really matter because it's a regular shape. Okay, so here we have volume is A times H. So the area of the rectangle in this case is length times width. So 25 times 10 and here our height can be the 15. So that's the area being worked out there. And my answer in this case is 250 times 15 is 3750 centimetres cubed. Here we have a cylinder. So the cross-sectional area is there. You can use a formula here. I don't like doing that. To me, volume is still area times height cross-sectional and the area in this case is a circle, so it's pi r squared h. Plug in what we've got, so pi times 2.1 squared times 1.6 is the height, and that gives approximately 22.2 metres cubed. Now in the textbook these volumes are worked out in two steps. Firstly the area of the base is worked out and then the volume, I'm working it out in one step. Okay, next we have a triangular prism and the cross section is that triangle. Now that is the only cross section. If I cut along this side I would get different shapes. If I cut along this line here, so I mean if I cut along here I would get that triangular shape every time. So that is my cross section. So volume is A times H. Area of a triangle is a half times base times height and then we've got times height again. So here we have a half times a base is 7.1 times 62 millimetres. I'm going to convert that to 6.2 centimetres, 6.2. And then my other height is the height of my triangular prism. In this case, it's the 5.6. OK, so playing that in the calculator, you get approximately 123.3 centimetres cubed. Next is a trapezoidal prism. You can see the trapezium 
here is the cross section. So my area, sorry, my volume, just check that I did volume before. I did. Had an Alzheimer's moment. So volume is the area times H. Area of a trapezium is half times H, A plus B, and then we're going to times by the perpendicular height. Okay, so we've got a half times the height of the trapezium is 20, times by A plus B is 15 plus 30, and then going to multiply it by the height of the prism, which is 25. Okay, plugging that in your calculator, you'll get approximately 11250 millimetres cubed. Again, you might want to work out the area of the cross section first, that's up to you. Next, we have a shaded cross section happening here. Okay, so this is going to be a subtraction. We're going to have to work out the area of the outside prism and then subtract the area of the inside prism. Or alternatively, we can work out the area of this shaded section first and then multiply by the 10. So we'll do that. So the area of the outside part is length times width. So that's going to be 7 times 5, which is 35. The area of the inside is length times width, and in this case it's 3 times. It's saying this length is the same as that length, so 3 times 5, which is 15. So the area shaded is the area outside minus the area inside, so 35 minus 15, which is 20. So my volume is a times H, so that's going to be 20 times 10, which is 200 meters cubed. Try and do these on your own, by the way. Don't just follow me. Pause the video. Give it a go yourself. Okay, and this shape here, that's my cross section, which is made up of a semicircle and a rectangle. So I'm going to go area 1 and area 2. So area 1 is my rectangle, so that's length times width. So that's going to be, okay, my radius is 7, so all the way across must be 14. So 14 times my width is 9. And 14 times 9 is 126. The area 2 there is going to be a semicircle, so pi r squared divided by 2. So pi times 7 squared divided by 2 and that's approximately 77 centimetres squared. Okay, from there, area total is going to be 126 plus 77, which is 203. Now just a note here, I would have used that exact answer from the calculator in there. I wouldn't have used the approximate 77. Okay, and now this answer here is approximate, I'm going to use it in my next answer. So I'm not approximately approximating continually, I'm only going to approximate once at the end. So volume is area of the cross section times H, so 203 times 20, and 203 times 20 gives me 4060 centimetres cubed. Okay, next. A cube with side length 3.5, well the volume in this case is just going to be 3.5 cubed because the cross section is 3.5 squared and then you multiply it again. And you get 42.975 which is approximately 43 centimetres cubed. Next, a rectangular prism 8 centimetres by 3.5 centimetres by 4 centimetres. So here you can just go straight off, length times width times height. So it doesn't matter which order you plug the numbers in, just go along and write them down and you get 112 centimetres cubed. A cylinder with diameter of 12 centimetres, well the radius is going to be 6 centimetres, so you need to know that. Volume of the cylinder is the cross section, pi r squared times by the perpendicular height. So here we have pi times 6 squared times by 65 and that is approximately 7351 centimetres cubed. 
Okay, you can give these to two decimal places or you can just round up to the nearest cubed unit. To what height would a rectangular base fish tank 50 centimetres by 30 centimetres be filled if it contains 15 litres of water? Well your first step is 15 litres is how many centimetres? And it's 15,000 centimetres cubed. Okay, so you've got this fish tank. Okay, it's 50 centimetres by 30 centimetres. And the question is, is how high is it? So our formula is length times width times my height. So in this case it's going to be 50 times 30 times h and my answer is the 15,000. So I have 15,000 equals 1,500 h divide both sides by the 1,500 and I get h is 10 centimetres. Therefore um, the water would need would be at a height of 10 centimetres. Always remembered worded question, worded answer or you'll lose marks. What volume of cement is required to build a cylindrical storage tank with a radius of 4 centimetres and a height of 7 metres and walls 10 centimetres thick? Okay, it's a bit tricky. Draw a picture, which looks something like that. Okay, so the radius of the whole tank, or the radius of, sorry, the radius of the tank is 4 metres, the height is 7 metres, and these walls here are 10 centimetres thick, which is 0 0.1 metres. Okay, so let's look at inside versus outside. So for the outside, so we're basically going to look at an outside cylinder and an inside cylinder. For the outside cylinder, the radius is just 4 metres and the height is 7 metres. Okay, so my volume here, for the outside, is going to be pi r squared times h. So that's pi times 4 squared times 7, which is approximately 351.9 meters cubed. For the inside, the radius inside is going to be 4 take away my point 0.1 because I need to take away, to remember that's a point 0.1 there, so I need to take that away. So that's 3.9 meters and my height, because we have to remember this is thick all the way around so my height is going to be 7 minus 0 0.1 which is 6.9 as well so my volume inside is going to be pi r squared times h so pi times 3.9 squared times 6.9 which is approximately 329.7 meters cubed so now I need to do the volume of cement is going to be the volume outside minus the volume inside. So 351.9 minus 329.7, which is 22.2 meters cubed. So therefore, 22.2 meters cubed of cement would be required. Okay. Pictures definitely help. Draw a picture. What now? We complete the exercise in the textbook, which is Geometry F1.